We went to the um You don't get you don't get inaugurated <laughs> and for the first time in our country's history as a woman uh, and Africa is represented here so fully. Mm. I think there's too many years of <laughs> of being through too many kinds of experiences after a while you get hardened and you take it all in stride, the good and the bad. I think it will be more international today. Mm -hmm. I want you to look this way. And it will be more women. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> This is Star News Bulletin with me, Comfort Whitfield. Today, thousands of Liberians crowded the streets of Monrovia to get a glimpse of the country's new president-elect, the so-called Iron Lady, Ellen Johnson Salif. Salif, who will be sworn into office this afternoon as Africa's first elected female president, has vowed to turn Liberia around after 14 years of civil crisis. Hello, Liberians. The days of the imperial presidency of a domineering and threatening chief executives are over. I want to talk to the women. The women of Liberia. The women of Africa. And the women of the world. Liberian women endure the injustices. During the years of our civil war, gang raped at will, forced into domestic slavery, yet it is the women who labored and advocated for peace throughout our region. My administration shall endeavor to give Liberian women prominence in all affairs of our country. The future belongs to us because we have taken charge of it. Yes, 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 yes. Mommy, Mommy always said to us, the day Ellen was born, this baby is going to be great. And so over the years, we always laughed and said, where is this greatness? <laughs> We just hope that this will be the realization of those dreams and goals. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. This is Star Radio News. I'm Comfort Whitfield. Today, President Ellen Johnson Salif announced her new cabinet, which, as promised in her campaign, will include a number of women in key positions, including the Minister of Commerce, the Minister of Justice, and the Minister of Finance. Women have not been uh, to the same extent as men party to all of the, the bad things of the past. Uh, they certainly were very strong voices uh, against uh, the atrocities in Liberia and the war. And they fought very, very hard to make sure that uh, the democratic process worked this time around. And so this is our biggest opportunity uh, to change Liberia. Good afternoon. So we've been focusing uh, very much on getting the basic underpinnings of the fiscal uh, system back in place. Clearly, uh, the Ministry of Finance, as does all of the institutions uh, that we've inherited as a government, uh, has very weak capacity. Um, we have to be able to get payrolls out on time. We have to be able to start getting money into the economy. We're trying to 
correct all of these past lapses, which mm -hmm. we know were many, you know, extensive. I didn't tell people it would be easy when I campaigned. The majority of the Liberian people I forget in the past and indeed want to put that era behind us. There are still a few diehards uh, and loyalists that, that want to keep bringing it back. Our challenge and responsibility is to make sure that nobody drags them back into so much suffering and death and destruction. They want to see basic services restored lights in our capital city, water. They want jobs to be able to send their children to school. The things that people everywhere almost even take for granted because they're so normal. Which one are you missing? You have a lot of problems about passport. You hear it in the media, you read it in the papers, you hear it on the radio. We have to get it straightened out. The, the old system of paying except. Okay then, okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Okay, bye, sir. Bye-bye. That's my president. <laughs> you saw how? <laughs> yes, that's my chief, uh, the president of Liberia. Uh, she's doing a very great job, and I have to be there to help her right away. This week, Liberia's new national chief of police, Beatrice Munasie, arrived in Liberia for the first time since she was forced out of the country during the presidency of Charles Taylor. How you doing, gentlemen? In a first police action, President Salis asked Chief Sia to begin clearing illegal market stalls from the streets of Monrovia. market then they will move in the market yes. and this place will be used for the children that's what we're meant for you know in the case of the marketeers you know everybody got rights they have a right to sell Mm -hmm. But the motorists have a right to drive on the streets because they buy their license, they pay their taxes. The market women have been understanding, they know their own minds with them. I think we're all together right now. Market relocation. I think uh, the Minister of Commerce, who was chairing a task force, can make a quick report on that. It was agreed that they would be relocated themselves on an interim basis uh, at the MTA yard. Uh, what I what I know we'll have to do at these temporary sites is to put up again temporary shelter because the, because of the rains. So you have to get something with stakes and and zinc and whatnot to and cover it. Going into shelter now, you're talking about a structure to support the shelter, then you're talking big money now. Uh, clearly we understand the urgency and why it's been necessary to go ahead and uh, pay for it. Um, we're trying to find a way to finance those requests, but we have to find a way to transfer resources and to make the additional resources we have available for things that they have not approved. Hey, look at me. What is okay, yeah, hello, who's in charge here? No, the government didn't promise anything like that. You do your part, we doing our part. Yeah. We can't do everything. We can't do everything. The government did not promise we fix nobody's table.
You cannot continue with that kind of tension. Fighting is God, you don't solve problem. But now we are all being rich. God, we've been fighting for a very long time. How can we come to one conclusion? The issue with the marketeers under control? Reports about them going back on the streets. Um, yes, we're working on that. That is in the night. We see most of them going by in the evening after four. But we straighten out. We really give orders. So we go on the street twice. Make sure that they don't uh, come in there. Very well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then I'll see you both shortly. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm next. We are here to enforce the rule of law. It's difficult, but uh, I want to prove a point that uh, women can be trusted and placed to dangerous position and they can even do better. Some basic numbers on, on, the, on the debt. We, we've talked uh, about this 3.7 billion in the outstanding debt for Liberia. You see it there. Uh, with the IMF, of course, as the largest uh, of the creditors, uh, followed by the World Bank, with the United States, of course, being the largest uh, bilateral creditor. So that's how the debt uh, looks like. Sitting here today and thinking of a Liberia of only 3 million people with a debt of some 3.7 billion, it's uh, quite mind-boggling. That debt is a drag on our ability to raise uh, new financing from our partners, and so it needs to be resolved. Unless we do that, uh, the risk of uh, a re-emergence of conflict in Liberia are all too real. Some of these debts represent bogus transactions. Prudence on a part of the creditors is being questioned that they have... Oh, oh, they have to respect our debt. And nobody come here. We'll keep chasing them every day, so they better don't come. Taking over a country that have gone through 40 years of war, is very, very tedious. The police do not have guns, they do not have handcuffs, no vehicles, no, no resources, not even paper to write on. I will do this thing now. You're not supposed to be to the graveyard. Every time we pull you out, you'll go back. Now we too will not get tired, so what will we do? We can't continue the, the normal time this. My greatest fear is that a small group might succeed in trying to return us to conflict. It will always remain a fear until we've done enough uh, in responding to the needs of the population rather than sitting around. The man is innocent until he's proven guilty. If they prove Charles Taylor guilty, I will climb up on this wall and take this sign down. Charles Taylor is innocent. national status granted yes but one thing we should understand the message of the government has not done nothing for us to see tangible they have another standpoint i tell you it's better than what a man said here today because people are not complaining yet but are we complaining today yes you cannot charge the government first of all was a tyrannical government the government the tyrannical government no different in that regard there's no doubt about it Land reform in its, in its total sense. We know it's a problem, you know it's a problem. Uh, we're trying to get it uh, straightened out, it will take some time. Or maybe we need to fast track uh, this part of what we are doing in Liberia so that uh, we can begin to touch um, the lives of uh, the people more, the grassroots people. The land problem, in a way, can be attributed to the war, to the fact that so many people were displaced unscrupulous people in an environment of indiscipline and lawlessness took land, sold it sometimes to two, three people, and it's going to be a very difficult task. I bought a parcel of land, and I started to build something on it, and someone came, so I was encouraging on the upper property. So I was arrested by the police, carried to the county attorney's office, and were transferred out the lands and months. 
it is our constitutional responsibility to make sure that um, we avoid some of this land dispute. We don't want extra war to come. You understand? So, um, yeah. so when you call me, that will be here. Okay. All right. Now we call you. Come more and look at it. And that's not that's not the only case. There are a whole lot of cases like this. Yes. We said we said let us for. If I oppose this side, if we can negotiate, that's what we negotiate. That's what we want. But I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. I'm saying that the only way this can be this can can be set up is that. To the due process, just what the minister but just said. So, 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 yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 because people, we can't get that. Ah, so, 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 so if somebody wants to be truthful here, do we say so? They are still taking money. It's both a corruption and a capacity problem there. And if you can't change the people, then I will insist you fire them and we'll go get young university student graduates and replace them. It's not a question now or you're trying to save somebody in his job. It's a question of saving your own job, saving my job. You gotta, you gotta correct that. We again have a dilemma here. The problem we have as a government is when we ask about second programs and they get delayed for over things we have no control because of other procedures and processes, then we have a problem. There, there are many reasons why they're not moving as fast as possible and the question is how fast the solutions are implemented. In our example, because their databases show that the country is still at war, is something that is an international problem about post-conflict countries and that we learn from. That's one example. In other cases, it's our own fault. The government is already under serious criticism. If we can't get these programs going that will absorb these people, then we'll never be able to do this and we'll have problems. So we want, the, want partners to understand the difficulty we face here. The implementation of programs are just too slow. Deadly silence. I think we depend upon the support of some of our partners, but I feel that um, in many instances we gave them some of our primary commodities in return. We gave huge benefits to their corporations which operate here, so it's not one-sided. At the Forest Rubber Plantation, workers are again threatening strike action against the company, and two Forest security personnel have been killed in the last week. The workers are demanding the government enforce a 37.5% raise promised by then President Charles Taylor. Today, President Salif is suspected to visit the plantation and announce the government's position on the wage increase. And now you all live here, you work for Firestone? This is my living area. Is this the only place you have? That's the only room. And uh, where do you use as um, bathroom? No bathroom. The bed right behind the hall, wait to get down before bed. Behind the hall. Just behind the hall. Are you in school? Yeah, I'm in school. For what? No, I'm in school. I'm in school. I'm in school. I'm in school. All right. You came to hear what I said. You see what I own. Yeah, true. Thank you. Firestone has been here since 1926. There is no reason for the workers in Firestone to live under the conditions they live. We are not going to accept it. We are not going to accept the fact that people live in houses that have no windows, 
that people live in houses where they're not schooling for them. Firestone has made enough money in this country to have treated the Liberian workers in a much better way. Our responsibility as the government is to make sure that the workers' rights are protected, that their benefits are fair, that they are treated properly, and this government is committed to that because that's the message we're taking to the workers. With all this big yard, is there any reason why we have to keep it outside? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There may be times when regional and international desires conflict. I'm not a perfect person, so when I have to make a political compromise, I struggle with my conscience. The country be been wrong because the PSN 1926 and they now to go right by the workers. So we told them what you would do about better housing, what you would do about education. But the main thing that says 37.5%. The <laughs> so then we went. So we started. To you know how we say so don't clap for us. <laughs> but the president then, Mr. Taylor, he came, March 1992, he came and he put our own law. So we look at that side of 37.5%, we say, well, this one here is hard. The problem comes from bad government. Let's tell the truth. We can't force the company on that one. Nobody was willing to go and tell them the truth. They just expected here comes another president who's going to tell us and make a promise and we'll go back cheering, you know, exalting. And nothing was going to happen. I may face demonstration, I may face anger, uh, but I think in the end it's good for our country and it's good for the path that we've chosen. legislative branches of government reached a new high as the Speaker of the House, Edwin Snow, accused the President of bribing lawmakers to root out her political opposition. The resulting stalemate has divided the legislature into factions, supporting and opposing the President. Even as we make, and we must make, greater effort at reconciliation and unity, a few have not yet brought themselves to accept the people's will as expressed through the October 2005 elections. They continue to plot and to plan and to strategize. We will do all that we can to gather the evidence to expose the distractors. This president is not out for reconciling this country. This president is out for dividing Liberia, and we are calling on them to put a stop to it. They have undermined previous governments. They are now undermining the very government that they are leading in. Africa is going through a transition. Liberia is going through a transition. We want be charges and counter charges and that's what an environment of democracy and freedom does it enables people to, to speak out but of course this dissent could be uh, dangerous as a matter of fact we've got recent intelligence that that even put the risk at a high level because of all that's going on with the the tensions in the in the legislature and we just have to protect ourselves and wait until things settle down 
as part of the continuing struggle between the executive and legislative branches, the president today ordered police to crack down on demonstrations protesting against her government. The leader of these demonstrations has been taken into custody on the basis of no permit. Liberia has progressed now to have serious political debates. But trust me, in Africa, 100% democracy is no way working, especially right after the war. Because the people will say, that's my right to sell in your living room. That's my right to scratch your car. I mean, they will misuse it so much that you will wish you never use the word democracy. Oh, why are we doing this? The they came in, they did the investigation. I have no means to challenge it. They still think their best guess, nobody's 100% sure, but their best guess is that it's electrical. You know, I must confess I didn't expect uh, the kinds of problems that we now find we've inherited. When problems stack up, it has a ripple effect, and that's why there are the periods when, when it rains, it pours. whether they're retired soldiers or any groups that have true grievances. Even if they gather and there's risk to my safety, I take the risk. I told them they were here for a purpose that has to do with our retirement, insurance benefit. Y'all say I will make war. No way. And there will be no Christmas. No way. That one there, when you said I want that, then I probably... Nobody said that either. Uh -huh. But I that all the people, people were saying to say, that you say I will make war. No, 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 no. As long as you are peaceful, you have every right to present your grievance to the government and we find a solution together. Isn't that the right way? That's the right way. That's the right way. Hello! We have finally met the president. And I have a message for you. Therefore, let everybody go in the city hall. What? Thank you all. Please sit down. It's been a long day for you. It's been a long day for me. We are happy to see you this time around. Um, to me, it was like a disgrace to, to us. I'm 28 years in the service. I don't want to work again. Just if I get what I'm supposed to receive, I got a problem. That one, you are, you are, you are yes. correct. Yes. You are duly yes. entitled yes. to be retired yes. with honor and mm -hmm. dignity and respect. Yes. And you will get that one. Yes. Those that die, their money is still there and their beneficiary need their money. Why are they doing the money? I must listen to them in a way that says, I want to hear you. I understand your plight. And that's the Uma approach. And it usually brings a positive reaction because I'm coming as a mother to listen to them. Our man, Christmas coming. Mm -hmm. That is the bottom line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one, the president. Christmas is coming. <laughs> we know the condition of the government. 
But we ourselves, we are dying too. Working. You look at how many did uh, 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 them. The people they see all the locals say we stupid. We are stupid. You're soldier. You stay there. You stay there. You look this. You stupid. On the other hand, and when people act out of order, you know I can have an effective response that will keep them in order. Well, you are saying you want me, you want me to talk what soldier did to me. <laughs> we got many people out there in the villages who today are saying you're being the same people that are the same people who beat us. That is seeing people who kicked us. That is seeing people who poor in jail. That is seeing people who kill us. Your cows in the villages poor today, and you're giving them all the money because they get on the street. We gotta deal with that too. How do we respond to those people in the villages? The people who got taken out of their homes because SSS and Warren faction went into their villages, took all of their things, made all of them run, killed some of their people. What do we tell them? Every time you make the man, we give you money. What more tell them? We gotta take care of them too. They were the victims. They were the true victims of the war. And those are the people we are concerned about. But don't stand up there and say you high and mighty. Don't forget those poor people out there that you have impoverished. Yeah, okay, but anyway, we'll see what we're able to do. Okay. Madam, thank you very much for what you are doing and continues to do. I promise you, as of tomorrow, you will not see tension no more. That's good. So, country recommendation, then we'll yeah. see how we deal with it. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay, thank you all, eh? Thank you. streets were today lit for the first time in over a decade. While the president had praise for her administration's achievements in 10 months, she also expressed continued frustration that many projects are impeded by Liberia's stalled efforts at debt relief. The process has not worked as well, I think, as we would have liked in terms of the involvement of of the partners uh, fully. It's a bit of a roller coaster, this Everest parents thing. We were uh, very, very encouraged uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, when the bank, the World Bank, had, had made the, the decision to proceed to their board. We seem to have hit another roadblock again, and I think something has to give. Then I must express disappointment and say now we'll have to look at all kinds of other options. I mean, we can't do all that we can as a country and a government to do the right things. And then you have to, you start backtracking and you and you start changing. We get assurances that we're going forward. I, I wonder whether there's there's there's, uh, there's there's true commitment here. Whether this partnership is real, or whether we're playing games, and whether you know we ought to look at all of our other options. We don't want to be hostage to to, to the little geopolitical games that are played. You know, if we can go beyond the traditional partnership, we got to find a way where we can respond to the needs of the people. Tomorrow, we'll be announcing officially the visit of the Chinese president. They're very serious. In fact, what they said is that they represent just the tip of the iceberg. So I think we've got a real window of opportunity with that part of the world, and we need to follow up on it. Thank you. There's potentially huge uh, financing from China that we want to benefit from. One of our challenges is to find uh, creative ways to, to draw on Chinese assistance without contravening some of our other commitments to our other partners, and in particular, powers like the United States, for example. This visit for us is truly historic. Well, to be very frank with you, Madam President, I was very much moved by the scene on the street. 
how did you leave it with the with the with the Chinese? Because somehow it seems to me that there's this large uh, cake that you really ought to get a slice of it uh, from the Chinese. From the Chinese. So that's one line. And then there's the other line is the U.S. And, and you can tell the Americans that the Chinese made you this offer. Uh, <laughs> then, then I think one could get the IMF to speed it up in order to liberate that money. So go for the jugular. Yeah. His point is, by having such an offer in your hand, going to them to say, yeah, we know we can't do this, but just look at the potential. Mm -hmm. You're not helping us. You're not allowing someone else to help us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Today I'm going to meet with President Bush. Just let him know how well we're doing and guess his political blessings for for the um, support on our debt. China is still way down on the totem pole when it comes to partnership and support for Liberia's development. They're just starting. Yes, they have big plans. Yes, they have big appetite for raw material, but uh, for us, the United States relationship is still the number one. They set the pace. When, when they take a step, much of the rest of the world follow, including China. Then I'm out of here and I get away from this ice. <laughs> Uh, Madam President, thanks for coming. I'm thrilled to call you friend. And we want to help you. We really do. As we told you, we just needed to get this debt off our backs. That's right. Um, you, were, you were wondering whether or not it was possible to achieve your dreams. And you asked for our help. I was impressed by your spirit, and so I pledge our ongoing help. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. The United States currently holds $391 million in outstanding bilateral claims on Liberia. We will cancel that debt, all of it, under the framework for highly indebted countries. We've started. We've started. It's a long road. It was always going to be a long road. We need time to make the, uh, more progress and then sustain the effort to make the progress we have to make in Liberia. What we have made can be attributed to the fact that we've got strong women leadership in the government. These are all strong women that have led the, the processes of change and renewal. With all the problems and, and all the scares, I remain optimistic that, um, that Liberia will rise again. See you.